It is a wild Wednesday on the Jeff Dubay Show. I'm not going to call them the suddenly resurgent wild. They're the less than embarrassing, mediocre, still, you know, they're stuck in the quagmire of mediocrity in Minnesota wild. Uh, but not completely floundering, not completely, uh, you know, without uh, at least. I, I'm trying to try to. I'm trying to find the sliver of positivity in this fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you look at the last couple of weeks. I mean, they had a, they won a couple of, uh, against bad teams. Uh, they had uh, the gutty comeback against Detroit. They wound up, uh, you know, grabbing a couple on the road at Edmonton. They're still seven points out of wild card with, I believe, uh, five teams. They got to jump. Uh, four or five teams I got to jump, so still not a ton of positivity. We're in the Southside Studios, joined by Scott Schweitz, uh, Tony Dean, Jason McGovern. Uh, gentlemen, uh, quick impressions of last night's 2-1 to one win at Edmonton. Um, I love that coil goal. Like, fin- <laughs> finally, we get, uh, finally we get a little bit of puck handling out of coil, a little bit of confidence. Um, that was great poise. He held on to that thing to the last second, got the goalie to commit, and tucked it in. I mean, you know, I... I haven't seen uh, Coyle score a goal like that that showed skill with the puck, handling, confidence, um, and thank you to the Oilers for that. Well, exactly. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of pieces. I was, I was talking to a buddy of mine on the way over here, and I'm like, you know, how many out of ten? I mean, how often does that happen with the fact that the goalie's coming out to to challenge him, so he's leaving the gap between himself and the net, and he's got and Coyle's got three guys, you know ultimately hanging on him. I mean, after he scored the goal, the one guy, you know, plowed into the board. So how many times out of 10 does he score that? That's why it's, you know, highlight real goal. It was, you know, one of the bigger stories on on Puck Daddy today on Yahoo. So, I mean, you know, getting a little uh, little bit of, uh, you know, national attention, you know, for for what our kids are doing. And more so, uh, I use the word kids because look at last night. I mean, the Nino goal is a result of Fontaine, uh, you know, stripping the puck away. Uh, from Yakupov, getting it over to Nino, putting it in, and then Coyle with the uh, you know the the nasty, uh, dirty goal from behind the net where he scored. I mean, so it, once again, we uh, we're not getting the usual the usual veteran uh, contributions that we maybe are looking for. All right, early impressions of Dubnik. What is he? Uh, started four now, four or five? Uh, I think last night might have been in the fifth. I mean, he's not a savior. He's not he's not going to come in here and, and, and stand on his head, but. Before he arrived, you did not have professional level goaltending. I mean, you had a fucking disaster. You had two guys who didn't belong in the league. Uh, I mean, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, so I mean, it, what you got now is a guy who at least makes the saves he's supposed to make and doesn't doesn't get you beat. I think if you if you took the the outings that he's given you since he's since he's came here, uh, and you take that and and sprinkle that through the beginning part of the season, we do not have the record that we do. For a number of reasons. One, he's not letting in some of the the softies that Backstrom and Kemper have let in. And number two, and I, I sound like a broken record, but somebody was on record, uh, I don't know if it was from, from Pittsburgh or somebody around the All-Star game talking about the confidence that a goaltender gives them, which is exactly what I tried to illustrate a couple weeks ago, is the team would be playing more confident in front of a goaltender that could keep them in the game. You know, you know what's so tough when you do that. I, I understand we're we're trying to do like a glass is half full, and you know, talk about the the impact of uh, having Devin Dubnik in in the lineup. I, I think it's more of an indictment of, of them avoiding the reality that they needed to remedy this goaltender situation. That Harding wasn't going to be a part of the solution. That Backstrom is just not a guy that's going to be in a rotation. He's not he's a guy that up. he's not a guy that should be playing. NHL goaltender anymore and and so when you mentioned that had Dubnik been in the lineup previous to you know them acquiring him I kind of wonder you know how that doesn't just really reflect poorly on on Fletcher's ability to to take the temperature of this team and 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 know that you're not going to get anything out of Harding and Backstrom I mean mean, that that, I agree I agree with you but but at at what at what point do you you know, do you make that decision and and ultimately have to stash somebody up in the press box because you can't get you can't do anything with him? I mean, you can't send Backstrom to the minors because he's over the age of thirty five, and if you send Kemper through, he'll get grabbed on waivers. So you pick up a third goaltender, which we have now. How if you do it earlier in the season? Um, you know, when 
when is hindsight's twenty twenty? When's a good time to do that? I mean, are you hoping that Kemper, you know, kind of snaps out of it and he, he pulls out of the you know the downward spiral? Do you hope that maybe you can you can get some sort of uh, decent outing out of Backstrom, considering that you know once upon a time he wasn't um, you know an all right goaltender? It, it I mean, I guess it, it, what it, when when do you do it? When's the right time? Well, not when they did it, because I would just say that when they did it was not the right time. I, you know, I, what, what's, what's very tough to, to see happen now is that the more games we win, we probably hurt ourselves because the holes dug deep enough to where you're probably not getting out of it. Uh, the, the, the point system as it is now, it makes it near impossible, you know, 6% chance. I think we're at to, um, go from where we are now to a number that, that gets you into that, eighth seed in the in the, in the Western Conference. Um you know, you have Eric Hall in the press box and you're playing Matt Cook and you're playing Kyle Brozniak, two guys that, you know, are on the on the the backside of their career. You know, is is Matt Cook contributing anything to the hockey game? Is is he getting his game better? I mean, going forward, you know Well he was quality early in the season though. He was, but and, you, you have to start looking to the future. I mean, I get the yeah, point. I yeah. mean, yeah, I mean, there's, there's just no point in watching guys die on the vine when, but they when you got young guys who got to get some minutes. They sure. haven't. Given if you're up not going to yet. playoffs, and if well, he, and no, if, have they? No, but they no, but you, no. I think Tony's they saying they should though. No, I mean, there's, there's <laughs> put it this way. I agree. I mean, Brodzak has no no reason to be on the ice at all, and the only con, you know con, contribution he put in last night is he put in a goal for the opposition off a skate. I mean that. That's the only thing that is is noteworthy of his performance last sure. night, and and you pull him in and out of the lineup, and yeah, does he have some defensive qualities? Maybe, but that's that's really you know not worth keeping that guy around because we've also seen Eric Holla can play two way hockey, you know, when he when he plays well. So at what point do you have to you know revert over to the future? You know, if your season is going the way it's going, in order to just give these guys some you know, some further responsibilities and, you know, and, and start planning for what's going to be next year with the reality that he, you know, Bronsiak will not be back. Um, you know, I think that if they kept going down the, the road that, you know, you think that they, they should have gone to, to further improve their chances of getting one of the higher draft picks, they're going to be sellers of, you know, some veteran players that, you know, maybe uh, other teams could be interested in. But no franchise that has the type of veteran players that we have can go about it and say, we're just going to nosedive it. And then, you know, kind of, you can't go through like a rebuilding, like a Buffalo or, I mean, and, and even if you do, I mean, there's no guarantees. I mean, hell look at, look at Edmonton. I mean, they've been, they suck for how long and they still, I mean, they're getting great draft picks and they're still not good. And Buffalo is, I mean, they sucked for how long and they're still not, I mean, good. I mean, so what, Where's the recipe that you you say okay we're gonna do like a Chicago type bit and we're gonna you know be really bad for how long and get a and get a Taves and get a Kane and then all of a sudden before you know it you know we, we've kind of have some enough people that we can we can have a supporting cast and win a cup Scott I I mean I get what you're saying but I think you know the the point that you're avoiding is is that we've decided not we that. What what the the wild organization has put out there is that this isn't Mike Yo's fault, but Mike Yo is is about the only piece that can be moved because of contracts, because of um, you know a down season for a couple of veterans, you know. Uh, and what 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 I end up seeing is that Mike Yo, if he is coaching for his job, or if if he's not on steady ground. He's not gonna. He's not gonna do anything dramatic. He's he's gonna do what he did today, and be disappointed in the second power play. I mean, it, you know, he's gonna put Eric Hollow in the press box because it's easy, man. I mean, I'm not. I I think it's very unreasonable to to look at Mike Yo and 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 want him to um, play some of the players that we can evaluate going forward, so we know you know what to expect or you know if if there's an, another level to the game for the young players. But I think that that's not helpful for us to win a couple games here, miss the playoffs, hurt hurt our draft position, and not know things about guys if they're sure. if they're able to be top six guys. I mean, we saw a great play from Coyle last last night in a, in a, a super in a super disappointing season where yes. he he got elevated to be the first line center one game and he played really well. 
But what does that tell us if, if, if we, we've never seen him in, in that role and if we haven't seen any consistent production out of him? Yeah. Uh, this year, the, the most disappointing player for the Minnesota Wild, uh, Mikel Granlin. And, and the reason it, that I say that is because even before he got injured and, and, and powerbombed sideways into the glass by Dustin Bufflin, he was not elevating his game being being the the point producer that it looked like he would be and he wasn't um as the number one center uh elevating his game to that next level man i mean in in Sochi, he looked like he had the chance to be a superstar especially paired up with solani on the world stage against the best players in the world he he was able to compete out there he was able to score but it was a bigger ice sheet so you know, is the NHL is is the ice surface too too small for him to be a contributor? No, I don't, I don't, I don't. I mean, I don't think that's the case because look what sure, he, but, but he, look he what, took a step back this look, year. This year, but look last year. I mean, if you want to talk about what the player is, the player is capable of. Sure, he's clearly shown that he is capable of being a playmaker, being being a you know good puck possession. He scored the diving goal. I mean, he can he can make highlight real plays. Sure. like we you know were dangled with with his postage stamp lacrosse goal. I mean, that is. That is what they touted him as, and does he have the the pieces to be that player? I think he does, but I think he has to be put in the right situation. And getting back to, but this is Mike, two this is two years in in a three year career where he's failed to launch. I mean, he was he was atrocious his rookie year. He wouldn't he wouldn't he wouldn't engage. He was on the outside. He was in the press box. He got he got not, shipped down to the AHL. I, I, I I'm not disagreeing with you. I think that we have a deeper problem, and I think it's and I'm not going to defend Mike Yo but at the at some point you have to you have to work with what you're given and if you have a locker room full of veterans you can't just you can't just and, and I don't think it's about saving the job I think it's if you lose if you lose the veteran presence in your locker room I mean it's not even about your job I mean it's about the team in general so then you all of a sudden what do you have a, a divided divided house of you have the veterans on one side and the youth on the other and it's like you want to see what they can do but to put a a veteran in the press box and and have you know have a a cancer that could develop from that. I mean, I think it comes down to if you really want to change the culture of this, you have to change your personnel as well. And when if that means Fletcher has to do a job in the off season, which I, I predict he's gonna he's gonna buy out Backstrom, then you have to you have to get a goaltender that's gonna be your number one because Harding will be gone. So then you have you have Kemper as your backup. NHL goaltender because you can't put him to the minors so you need somebody who is capable of being your number one the other thing you have to do is you have to determine what you're going to do with Miko because he's going to be on a downward slide is, and, and, and if you is on a downward well, slide it's going to get glaring is, I mean it's going to get worse so you have to move him before that happens and if that means you have to pair it up with a draft pick uh some sort of prospect something else to get him out of here I think you're going to see as much as people continue to oh defense this and he's you know this that I mean you get rid of him not only do you do you clear the path for the real leadership in the locker room to take to take ownership of the team, and you don't have to worry about feelings and this and that and blah whatever. I mean that all the the elephant in the room is gone. You've cleared a space for a center that could step up without somebody getting in his way and without having to make somebody feel like they deserve being a top two center. So a couple things are happening with that, and who knows if that changes the dynamic of the remaining veterans that are there. I mean, you lose a Brodziak, you lose a Harding, you lose a Backstrom. You, I mean, you lose a Miko. I mean, if you if you clear out kind of the old guard, does that does that change the culture within the locker room? How do you how do you move Miko Koivu? I just said. I mean, you're going to have to do something. I mean, you're going to have to pair it up with some sort of thing to get rid of him. Do you but, think Do you think he's tradable? Is there a trade that you could trade him? Yes. Is it going to be pretty? I don't think so. But. What is the other side to that? Do you keep him around and just continue to pay him the the large amount of money with no production and causing some you know some subsequent issues? I mean, what's the better of two evils? I mean, you don't straight buy him out because Uncle Leo isn't going to pay to do a traditional buyout of this guy for the remaining four years of his deal. Yeah. I mean, what is that six six point seven over the course of four years? I mean, I'm not a mathematician, but what is that twenty six million dollars? I mean, you have to amortize that then over how many years of the buyout? I mean, that's I mean that's a uh, that's a Bloomington St. Cloud boy uh, times four or five. I mean, well, and you're, so, not getting, you're not getting Mark Parrish dollars out. I mean, that's that's two or three times what Mark Parrish costs. And and so I don't I don't mean for it to be an attack, but like 
what what we're saying is that that Yo did the right thing in not alienating the veterans, so he doesn't have a, a, th- this in the locker room. Except for it seems like we have this in the locker room. You know, this team hasn't been able to explain why they don't come out and they don't have a team effort. They're not able to duplicate the the way that they played last year, especially when they're extremely effective, or even even like what we saw for the two first two months. Like it, it just seems like there is a problem in the locker room. I you know and I, I agree and I agree with you. I mean, when you get comments from Coyle that after after the what I read today about him calling out the second power play, I mean Coyle he he gives the right response. He says, you know, we got to do what we can do with thirty seconds, and that's that's the response he has to give. Sure, but that's should not he, helpful. Should that's he not be, helpful. It's not. But you're you're in the the youthful side of the locker room. Sure. You imagine if you came out as a as a second year or third year player, and you got how many years of experience on the other side of that fence, and you're like. Damn right, we're getting hosed. Like we're better than the power play one, but dumbass over here won't play. I mean, you you sure. can't you can't say that. I mean, you have to you have to toe the company line and be like, yep, we got to do what we can do. But I mean, Scott, take advantage but of Scott, it. Scott, I guess if, if that's the reality, then Mike Yo isn't doing a good job. No team you, that then, you, will, you will have that on no team will some player come out and and basically call out his organization to say this this dipshit doesn't know shit from Shinola, and if he had half a brain, he'd be playing the guys that are scoring like me and Nino and. And Zucker and the rest of the guys that are actually contributing, the rest of these bums are past their prime, making too much money. Sure. And, and, I mean, and, and we're in a shit. If we can get dead weight out of here, that'd be great. I get it. And we're in a 24 hour news cycle and Twitter and, and, and things blow up and they become viral. I, I 100% I get that. The thing I don't understand is people defending Mike Yo, saying he's done a good job when he hasn't done a good job. Like a lot of the things that are a problem with regard to usage, with regard to personnel stuff, with regard to empowering the young kids and, and, and rewarding them or having faith in them, he has not done. Nice. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll, get mean, you, we'll get you guys in here in a second. He, no, no, you guys keep going. I he, love it. He literally has not done that. If you if if you look at a guy like Nino, right? Who Nino has flashed this year that he has he has a chance to be one of the better players on the team, one one of the one of the best scorers on the team, certainly, right? He he gets his top line minutes, but as soon as there's anything that Yo takes issue with, he's gone. And then he finds himself on the fourth line. He finds himself playing with Kyle Brodziak on the third line, which is not ever going to help him to to have anybody contribute on his line. He's going to have to do way too much, and then he ends up spread thin. I mean, this is all stuff that's taking place, and it's on the coach. When, When you have guys that don't get the opportunity that you do from veteran guys who aren't producing, who who never have their role changed, they never have their their ice time decreased, they they never get taken issue with. I think that that creates an, a very honest question in the locker room. How come it doesn't matter how you're performing, how you're playing, how you're going at that time if you're one of these guys? And then you know, when, I agree. No, when, I, I agree with that complete statement. And I would say this: yeah. I don't think there's a coach out there though, that unless he unless he has unless he has been around long enough, like a Hitchcock or somebody else that basically has the seeds that could be like. Hey, you're a bum. Like I don't care who you are. You're gonna play third line because that's how it is. I don't care how much you're making. We're putting this guy out with me. And and you just basically like you have the the credibility behind you to say that. I mean, so I don't think Yo has enough experience in his career, especially considering his age. He's only how many years older than the oldest guys in the locker room. But he doesn't have that to bring forth. So is that his fault that he doesn't have? The, the tenure to be able to say that stuff? Maybe. I mean, that that's a contributing factor, sure. But I still don't think that you're going to see – if you put another coach in this situation, you're going to have a really hard time making those decisions without alienating people that have immovable contracts. And so you're back to – it's a catch-22. Hey, you're not playing well, so i got to put you to third line. i got to pull you off here. This player's pissed off. They're not going anywhere. So then they're all of a sudden going to become an issue for you in the locker room. So I'm not saying I'm not saying it's easy, but when you're the guy in control, when you're the guy that that is in charge of those decisions and you don't get it right, you should get credit for that. There shouldn't be a blanket. Let's, you know, Mike Yo, he's done this and that. No, there's not you you should get credit for that. And and for whatever reason, and we talked about this last week when you weren't here, there's this weird like Minnesota apologist thing. Same thing with Gardenhire. When Gardenhire you know, he gets unlimited shots to lose 90-plus games? Like, isn't it time? Well, to- he built up some credibility. Sure. 
And, I mean, and, 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 but at, at a certain point, it, it comes time to give that guy credit for not doing it. Let's, and it did. And it did. Yes. I, I mean, but it, maybe yeah. a season too late, though. Like, that's the Minnesota way. I mean, yeah, I mean, we give you extra but, time. Or, I mean, but no, I mean, this, Minnesota's this, been on a slide since they, since they moved into their shiny new stadium. I mean, they basically had to have a competitive team to build up, to build up enough buzz. So well, he, so he, they so they were so when they moved into their shiny new stadium, it was like woo, and then all of a sudden, well, they won the division that year. But I'm saying, but after that, salaries were cut, I don't players like, I, weren't retained, honest, and eventually, I'm you not just, crazy about the comparison. Eventually, you just start sliding. But talk about a guy who won six division titles in nine years, as opposed to a guy who's never done a goddamn thing. Sure, but I mean, but in Minnesota, you can win a division title, and that's enough to have people excited, hey, rather than you never winning in the playoffs hey, well, ever. My, no, but my point, of, the point I was trying to make is, Gardy Gardy doesn't control the personnel. He only has the players that he. Has been given. Mm-hmm. I mean, from whoever the general manager sure. was at the time. Mm-hmm. So if you if you have the piece of the puzzle, and I'm not putting this all back on Fletcher, but I think Fletcher has is, has got too many you know too many cooks in the kitchen that maybe have have you know large contracts. I mean, not to the point of like Philadelphia, like we talked about before the show. That you know, I mean, if Holmgren signed you know those multiple contracts that were just absolutely ridiculous that yeah you, know, you know that still exist in in the league now. You know, uh, one of them now that uh, that LA has to deal with. But point being is, you know, somebody that and they they had to sign Miko to the contract they had to sign him to because he was really the only remaining player at the time. Well, that's because that they th- had they had to keep around because that's they because had, Risebrow and and Lemire burned it to the ground. No, I mean, absolutely. Then, so so what do you do yeah. with the fans? I mean, you have to you have to balance that with and the point of and I'm all about like if you can't make the playoffs. Absolutely. I mean, what's the point? Sure. But you have a product that you have to put on for 18,500 people. So you think that those people appreciate, like, the fact that they shelled out cash to watch their team tank? Sure. I mean, hell no. You'd have, you'd have like, absolute rioting of, like, okay, we paid no, how much? Wouldn't. Not, I mean, no, you wouldn't. Not here in Minnesota. I, you don't. You get away with so much here. We're not an East no, Coast if, fan base. If you, if you, we're, if we're if you slid, if you slid in that in that arena, stopped uh, stopped being full and everything else, and I mean, look look at how many years they sold out that arena when when their top center was was Jim Dowd or some some garbage. That, but it was new though. The bit was new. It was new. And 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 so, but we've already been through lean years where they still sold out that arena. Now this was supposed to be a Stanley Cup contending year. And that's that's the expectation put on the season by the organization, by the owner, by the general manager, by bringing Mike Yo back because he was able to coach this team through adversity. And then we get to December and they collapse again. So now now we're looking at it right, Mike Yo. You got to look at motivators. Mike Yo, he he is probably the odd man out. I think I think Fletcher is is, is there's, no, a, there's no way Mike Hill's the coach of this team next year. There's no, a zero percent no. chance. That's what I'm saying. There's a zero percent so, chance. But, I mean they, they can't, there's no possible justification to bring this idiot back. No there's no fucking way. And the the, the best part is what while we're looking at it, right, like we're probably already eliminated, you want to get more of an idea of Matthew Dumba, of of Darcy Kemper down the stretch of uh, Granlin, all, all, all the all the young guys, because because Granlin and Coyle were supposed to be the guys, and yeah. and they've been surpassed production play wise by Jason Zucker, by uh, by Nino Niederreiter, by you know even Justin Fontaine. It, when he's elevated and he gets the puck on his stick, he scores more goals than Coyle. I mean, and he, and Justin Fontaine is is a bottom of the roster guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I tell you what, though, the, the, the play he made last night to get that first goal, it was, uh, uh, that, that, that was reminiscent of the kind of things we saw last year. Third, fourth line guys, just working hard, contributing, you know, finding a way. And, and, uh, and with Coyle, before we go to break here, not only do you have the nice goal, but there was, uh, he, he had a couple of rushes up the off wing where he just, where he, 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 he you know, used his hip to keep the guy off of him, you know, got on his edge and fucking turned a corner. I mean, he did it, he did, he did it a couple of times. Well, when, he, when he plays like a man child, then he, he plays well. I mean, that's his, he's a, he's a power forward. He has size and he has, when he, when he does it well, he has, he has great puck control. Mm-hmm. I mean, he can keep somebody off of him, Yep. you know, Against the wall, the hip. towards towards the net. I mean, it it it's been it's been illustrated many many times that we've seen when he does it, he does it well. But a lot of times, I think he loses that. And I I mean, I'm not in the locker room. I have no idea how these kids feel. And maybe I mean maybe it is some sort of a a weird uh, uh, you know uh, I don't know what the word I'm trying to look for. But basically, like the fact that they know that they it doesn't matter what they do that they're not going to be rewarded for it, and it's all going to revert back to the system. So maybe 
it may be at that point, like it's a sure. mental thing. Like, hey, it doesn't matter how well I play. Um, if I, my name isn't, you know, one of these six people, like I, I'm not going to get the love. So, and the other thing, if Mike Yo's not back next year, right? Yeah. But he, but he still has a shot at at saving his job again. Who do you think he's going to revert to? He's going to revert to the veterans. We're not going to see Matthew Dumba get but, any player power play that's, time. And We're not. And, yeah, and, that's and that's something that needs to change. But that's whether, where the catch twenty two is: is the fact that if you are if you need to revert to those people in order to save your job, and you're not able to to get past that, then there needs to be personnel changes. And if you can't make the personnel changes, it's it's going to continue. I mean, who, you're going to you're going to can't make the personnel changes. I'm confused. Who can't? I mean, you have to you have to move. We're talking about this season. We're talking about this season for from now until the end of the season, and we're talking about Mike Yo not playing. Yeah, does he do what's guys. best for the organization, or does he save his, try to save his? Job? He's going to do what's best for him, man. And that's Fletcher has to see that he has to get ahead of it. You have to get him out of there so that you can evaluate these kids and make cho- make the right choices in the off season because he hasn't done that. Okay, so you get the kids in and you make different. Uh, aside, let's move beyond the power play. So. You, yes. you you switch up the power play, which we all agree that is broken, and 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 it needs it needs you don't need statements. I mean, it, it's absolutely ridiculous that he puts out like, oh, I need more from the second PP, and the fucking second PP doesn't play. So yes. whatever, it's like, yeah, hey, I want something from somebody who doesn't do. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yes. So you switch up your your power play personnel and, and get that going, but beyond that, what? What are you, you? What are you changing? I mean, you I, get I, Eric Howell in the lineup. You play Nino Niederreiter you, you top Brodziak, six moments. You sit Cook. You, you sit Prosser. There's no yeah. reason well, for I'd Prosser to a, get another minute this year. There's no reason Prosser ever should have been signed. You need here. to play, You need to be playing Blum up there. You need to be playing any anybody else. Anybody that has a future with the organization needs to be getting NHL minutes so that going forward into the summer that you know what pieces got to be moved. All right, okay. let's take a pin in this for just uh, a quick minute. We're going to take a quick break, come back, and get right back into this debate. Hi, I'm Terry Daniel, and I've been a voice actor in Minneapolis for over two decades now. How often are you getting compliments on your voice? Now is the time to do something about it. If you're interested in getting into voiceovers, please contact me via my website at universalvoicetalent.com. Okay, last year, 2013, I lived uh, just down the road, Pleasant Avenue, just a few blocks here from Uptown Pond, which is right on the corner of Lake and Pleasant. And, uh, you know, there are a couple of times, you know, you, you just try to get to that next payday, maybe a couple of bucks short. Uh, if you've got some items, jewelry, diamonds, uh, electronics, I mean, you come down here and they give you a fair price for it, and then you come back a week later, two weeks later, whatever, you get it back at a real reasonable price. So we're very competitive, we hope, on, on different angles, in different ends, in different articles, uh, computers, electronics, TVs, mm-hmm. uh, jewelry. Uh, we, we, we buy, we give loans, um, and we also have uh, emphasis on, on diamond jewelry, too, uh, that we also try and give credit for the best we can. We're specialists in that area also. So it's an all-round sort of uh, combination. Well, it's a great place. It's a nice, clean place with honest people, and I tell you what, it's got a real family feel to it. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's tied into Strauss family, and I go way back right. with, with the late, great Jerry. Right. So, I mean, right. these are people I know and people I trust. You can find them on Twitter, too, by the way. They're at Uptown Pond, and also on Facebook, Uptown Pond and UptownPond.net. Mm. We're back. Wild Wednesday, Jeff Dubasio. I can't see a scenario in which Mike Yo is coaching uh, the Minnesota Wild next year. I mean, there's no way they're going to make the playoffs. There's no way they got the fight in him, the rally in him. The, 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 he's just, he's not going to be here. Now, if you're Fletcher, I mean, you know, this, is, this is a call where you've got, to, you've got to get it right or you're done. I mean, you cannot hire another fucking guy off the street and just say, boy, I think this guy's got what it takes. You've got to, get, you've got to make a safe pick. I mean, you've got to go out and find somebody who is, is, is not a risk, the, the way Richards and you know, were risks. Uh, so, uh, I did, and, and, and if, you are, if you are ownership, do you even let Fletcher make this choice? Uh, or, I mean, do you let him take a third shot at a head coach? That's all, I mean, that's ridiculous. Well, there's no way he'd do it again. I mean, I, I, mean, I know that that's too little too late, but, I mean, look at, look at what you, uh, the coaches that we passed on uh, both times, both with Richards and with Yo. I mean, uh, coaches like Ken Hitchcock and coaches, you know, Laviolette. Laviolette, who I mean, who coached the All Star, you know, All Star team. I mean, so you get coaches that that were out there and available um, that they just didn't they didn't go after. And I mean, whether that's the connection, you know, that uh, that he had with Yo in, in Pittsburgh, and then what he did with uh, you know with the Houston Arrows. I don't I don't know if it was some sort of you know forethought of like, hey, he's going to be bringing a lot of these kids up. 
So maybe he has. But he that doesn't. Connection. He doesn't play the kids. He doesn't play the kids in. No, he, I mean it, he doesn't elevate them. He doesn't. He hasn't developed these kids. I mean, you know that that that's such a BS narrative about yo. Is that yo? No, I'm just saying what the reason is. What what sure. what the reasoning? I mean, if you're trying to get your 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 thought around, like why? Yeah. That's it. I mean, the the Pittsburgh connection and the fact that he brought he brought the the arrows to the Calder Cup. I mean, and that's. I mean, if you're if you're looking at it from that way, I mean, doesn't that doesn't that have you know hold water? I mean, the fact that the coach brought the HL team to the Calder Cup, and, I mean, and he he really they did the becoming wild thing, and they they showed him on the bench with all sort of like sure. fire and brimstone, and like you sure. know he pissed in vinegar. I mean, I mean they were beeping out every other word he was saying because he was so fired up. I mean, that was like the the practice that we saw. I mean, that was that's the Mikeo that I saw on the becoming wild town in Houston. I mean, sure, and well, and this team rallied that was during the game. I mean, this that team was practice. This team rallied around him. I mean the kids carry the kids carried this team down down the stretch last year. The kids in the playoffs, stepped too. up in the playoffs, right? Agreed. But Mike Yo has for whatever reason deferred to these veterans and, it's, and it's, just refused. Yeah, it's, and and that's why it's such a flawed thing. Like why I don't It know. is and it's a, I think it's a it's a it's a combination of when he had this is my opinion, but when he had the control over youth and he was viewed upon as as a leader and you know as as a coach that had merit uh, it didn't matter who you were you ha- I mean you're bought in I mean I don't think he has the ability um, good bad or otherwise to be able to balance the youth against the the veterans and whether it be the age whether it be the money whether it be the personalities whether it be the collection of all of them which probably is sure. he just doesn't have the the skills necessary to to make decisions that are unpopular against people like that. Yeah, he doesn't want to be the bad guy. I mean, he didn't want to be the bad guy with Danny Heatley. He didn't, he, you know, I mean, we've seen it over and over. Now going forward, if if Fletcher does get a chance to hire a new coach, I think that, you know, it it needs to it needs to be a thing that they that, that they decide upon and in um, you know, what what's so stark about anybody can miss the playoffs. Anybody can have a bad season, lose a guy. You know, Pecorini being in the lineup this year and and being out of the lineup last year takes Nashville from a dumpy team that I never thought would have a shot to being a legitimate contender because he, you know, that guy means that much. What what you're looking at going forward though is is what what are what are we trying to accomplish? Like what are, what what's going to happen here for the rest of the season? And and I think let let's not kid ourselves and let's get ahead of the curve, man. I mean. That that's what I think. I think if if you can get assets going into next year, you have a great. I love this group of kids. Even even though I'm you know I'm down on Coil, I still think Coil has talent. I I still think Grandlin can come back and be a number one guy. I think the the defensive corps. Even even though I don't think that they've had their their best year, especially Suter. I think that you have a bunch of talent there, and and I think that you have all of those positions filled. So it's not that I think that it's off. I just think that there has to be a new program here. There has to be a, a different setup than what it is because what it is isn't working. You can't go into the off season, play around, dance around the issue that that Mike Yo, you know, maybe this wasn't his fault because he didn't. No, nobody took the reins during this year and they let it go off track and they they melted down in December again and there's there was no comeback to be had. No, and I agree, I, and I don't know what it's going to take to you know to fix it. I mean, it's not a band aid thing. It's basically, I mean, it's going to be a surgery thing, and it's it's something that you're going to have to go in and and really evaluate from the top down. You know, and don't wait too long. If you're going to make the move, you got to make the move and get the coach in here that that is going to also uh, be able to evaluate the team and and make recommendations about personnel. And sure. if you have to make the moves, what moves do you need to make? I mean, if if you need to if you need to move a Koivu contract, then you better damn well start figuring it out now and, sure. and figure out, like, if I'm going to move this, who's the takers? What is it going to cost me, both with retained salary or, or or pieces of the puzzle, and just get an absolute new approach? Now, to play devil's advocate, would I like to see how Mike Yo would, would coach if basically he was able to wipe some, wipe some maybe slate clean and give him the ability to coach the way he coached down in Houston? Devil's advocate, but... Just to see if there would be any differences with how he approached his locker room. So, if you're our ownership, do you do you let Fletcher make this call? I mean, Dad, do you trust him to make a call on a third coach? Man, I you know, 
Who's, I, who's left, though? I mean, I, I know. I'm, I, I, I like Fletcher, and I think Fletcher's done a good job. I think Fletcher's a sharp guy. I don't want him removed. I'm not. I'm not calling for his head. No, I, Fletcher, I, no, Fletcher's not going anywhere. But I don't who, want him but, going anywhere. But who? Wow. What coaches? No, he's not going anywhere. He's wow. he turned he turned this franchise around I mean, with the. He with did. The, he I don't. I don't. With, I think he's done enough to to to, to but, just want to be here or to, to to earn the right to stay here. But I would. But I would say before this season, I w- I was completely on board with that. But the, the evolution of this season and, and what what the contracts look like and the assets look like, I'm not sure that he has. You know. Uh, what, wait a second. What has he done between the start of the season and this and, and now? Uh, Charlie Coyle, uh, not being a top six guy, probably. That's, um, that's, 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 yeah, but he, he secured he secured contracts with players that that I think are going to be the future of the franchise. And the one person, I mean, if you really if you really want to if you want to you want to break this down, the one person he did not sign a long term deal with is the player that has played subpar this year. So what do you think that does for his leverage? I mean, he's going to go into the contract with Granlin, and instead of going against a, a year he had last year, sure, which where, is good. Where was his stock? Way up here, which is good. But I, 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 I mean, would just say, if you look at Charlie Coyle, uh, and he did it for a reason. If you look at if you look at Charlie Coyle last year and the year before, he looked like a guy that's going to be a top six power power forward winger, and, and it makes the Bre- Brett Burns trade look good. On this side of it, when 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 we're figuring out what we got out of that Brett Burns trade, we have Charlie Coyle, who's not necessarily a center. He's not definitely uh, one of our top six best forwards. And uh, the other pieces in that trade, um, we traded the second round pick for Jason Pominville, yeah, we can, who we can, has been right? productive, but he has not been uh, a difference maker, winning games for us this year, and he disappeared in the playoffs last year. And then the the other piece in that Brett Burns trade. Is Zach Phillips, who is a uh, bust? Oh, you, so, but we've but we've talked so about this. One we've trade, talked about this multiple but, times. You can't belabor that point because Burns Scott, was you, Burns was walking anyway. But Scott, here's what here's what I'm saying. That trade looked like a win until it wasn't a win. Uh, the the Backstrom deal. It looked like uh, Fletcher Savily uh, got back a guy that could contribute. Was was a guy that uh, led the, the NHL and wins uh, the lockout year. Um, they got him for he was he's getting paid six million dollars now he's getting paid three point five million dollars that looked like a win until we figured out that Backstrom is an albatross and and that's a terrible contract and that's a that's a Fletcher signed we, contract. We've, we've gone we've gone down the goalie road in in previous shows but, and I and I and all those contracts were for a reason. But all of these things are are things that Fletcher should get credit for on this side of it. You can't. I mean, obviously Fletcher's done a lot of good things, but this year he's being exposed for a lot of stuff that did that's not working. Out Tom, Thomas Vanek signing, good, good, bad, ugly. It's good that you add Thomas Vanek here. He's not a, he's not scoring goals. He's not playing with players that that allow him to be a, a 20, 30 goal scorer. And this is just a year removed when he scored uh, twenty plus goals on like four different teams in a season. Yeah, but have so, the have the the forethought of that to know like okay, so this is what's going to happen. I can tell you that there is many teams that would have lined up around the league and paid him more. Than we did. Sure. So then, so sure. So but really, it doesn't. It doesn't change the fact that this, this this is all stuff that Fletcher is responsible for now because he's the guy making those decisions. Just like you could have you could have put Darcy Kemper in the minors before you he required waivers. You could have let him work out his stuff down there, and you could have acquired a, a Devin Dubnik type for a third round pick before you got to that point. You didn't do it right. You you acquire Dubnik when the season is is basically at the point of no return, and now you have to carry three goaltenders. I mean, that's a Fletcher thing. Yeah, but he also, I mean, he also, you got, I mean, if we're going to, if we're going to just live in, in, you know, negativityville, I mean, that's. But it's not negativity. No, but you can, you can, you can, you can pick all this apart, but I mean, let's go on the plus side of things. I mean, Fletcher took over, took over a team and a youth and assets that basically was, the old mother, mother Hubbard cupboard. I mean, it was nothing in here because yes, Riseboro did a fire sale to try yes. to like save his ass. So it, all of a sudden, you take over that. You need to find a way to to build your cupboard and build it fast. You have to find a way to to get back a fan base that had, had ultimately like you know started to just disintegrate because of you know the Marion Gabrick thing. And then you have the fact that your coach is like, ah, I'm out of here. I don't want to do this. And then they fire Riseboro. I mean, you really had a, a, a collection of things that were bad. So he comes in. He has to. He has to give the, the Miko thing. Was it the right thing to do? No, I think he had to. But along the way, what Miko you, thing? I mean, he had to sign Miko to that. He deal. didn't sign Miko. De- Risebrow signed Miko. He was a franchise player. But did he sign Miko right before, like when he was worried about his job? No. He Risebrow, Risebrow signed Miko. He's your franchise player when you show up here, right? So he inherited Miko. Whoever did it, if it was, if, if I might be wrong, but whoever did it's it, Fletcher. it was it was basically Fletcher a, inherited him. It was a 
a play that was like, we need to somehow put a face on our franchise, put a put a consistent captain patch on somebody, and say, this is the leader of our team, and mm-hmm. we're going to rally and build around him. Sure. And and now they think about it, maybe Fletcher Fletcher did sign. Somebody, yeah, had, it somebody was had to do it, and the reason was yeah. exactly that. You had to basically put a face on your franchise that was in flames at that point. Sure. I mean, you had to somehow find damage control. And I think it was, at the time... Yeah, I mean, it probably looked okay, but now you go forward, just like any of these long contracts, sure. the Parisian suitor contract is going to look absolutely horrible, you know, in, in years 11 through 13. But, Scott, I'm not arguing that, that he doesn't have a lot of things that he accomplished. I, I, I think he accomplished a lot of things, but you, you can't not give him credit for the things that are his fault. And, and, and that's, that's true. But and, if you if you never but, if you never swing, you're never going to do anything. Sure. I mean, but, like Nino for but, Nino for Clutterbuck. I mean, that's genius. But when this team misses the playoffs this year, and this was supposed to be a year that they 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 contended for the cup, and and you're going to miss the playoffs, and and you're going to fire your second head coach when people called into question why you would hire a guy with no head coaching experience when you did it, and you just gave him a three year deal after last playoffs. I mean, the, that's all stuff that Chuck Fletcher has to be responsible for because he's the guy that did that. Well, I mean, you also – I'm not saying you went, can't you like just, him. You also just went to the second round of the playoffs and, and, and ultimately ultimately went toe-to-toe with Chicago and yes. lost because of a shitty stanchion thing. Nah, I mean, and and your veterans didn't show uh, up. Come well, on. Okay, they didn't do that. But, I mean, once again, the stanchion thing, like, ended – you know, ended some that ultimately could have gone to a game seven. Sure. It could have. I mean, you never know. Could Then – then it held whole. I mean, the whole dynamic changes if yes. if they don't score that, and who knows what happens. But but are the wild are the wild close to a Stanley Cup? No. Are they going to fire their coach? Yes. You got to rewind. Is this, this going to be Hold the on. second coach Hold that you though. fire? Yes. It, does he have a three year contract when you fire him? So he, you're going to pay Mike Yo two more years. Can you straight face tell me that you wouldn't have renewed Mike Yo after bringing you to the second round of the playoffs last year? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm not a Mike Yo guy. Oh shit! Oh, you, come on. You yeah, imagine? Did, you imagine? Did they have to? Did they have to? Yes. Oh my yes. god! Yes. You would have had outcry. Did, did they? Ha- did they have to? Yes. Of course. Did I think Mike Yo should have gotten fired before they uh, climbed out of the toilet last year? Yes, I did. So you can't like put 100. So you can't but put then something. They would, then you would have been wrong. God, you can't put something uh, on Fletcher. I mean, you don't they, think they could have made the playoffs without with, with without a uh, like a, an think, assistant coach? Hell yeah, they could have. So so you think so you're you're gonna tell me that 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 you remove Yo before they make their big run in the second half and you think they're still going to make that run. Yes. That's 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 really rolling the dice. You, you don't you don't think really so? High. You don't you don't think that's they, a that's nope. a that's you don't a huge think, reach. You don't think they, you think that Mike Yo contributed I'm, that I'm much big, to them pulling it out of the toilet? Yo. It doesn't matter. What you did take, Mike Yo do? You take, I'm you not take, a big Yo guy, but you, I mean, what you, did you he do? I don't want to mess with something that worked. You remove the general out of it, you don't know where things go from there. I'm sorry. I mean, you you take the guy out of there, and the player's like, "Well, God, I guess the season's over." And I mean, are they? It's Be- all mental. Because this it's all th- mental. This whole year, we've we, we've heard that coaching doesn't matter; it's on the players. I mean, that that's what they've been selling that Mike Yo doesn't matter this year, and it's not his fault because the players aren't getting it done. That that's coming from the same locker room that you're saying. Well, if Mike Yo wasn't there down the stretch, then they don't go on that run. Well, here's, I they, here's I the, totally here's disagree. the kicker though. The kicker is the people that produced and got you to the place where in your in your playoff run. Are the kids? The kids never would have responded to anybody if if they if they if the sheep lost their shepherd. I, I mean, I mean the, the the veterans maybe don't need it, but at that point they're like, whatever. I mean, we'll yeah, pack I'm, it I'm in. And go. Who knows if they make the run? I'm not saying they do, that they don't. I'm saying who knows? You sure. can't possibly say that they do. Well, I th- but I, I mean, think you you have a guy on that coaching staff that is well respected and well liked in in, uh, in in Rick Wilson, and and I think that he would have been the the guy to take over had they fired Yo when when they collapsed in December. I mean, all of this is hindsight, obviously. Yo didn't get fired, right? But and you had to and you had but, to extend him after the season. But look, you had to. But correct. look at but look at all of the things that have not gone well, and they're and Fletcher's responsible for them. So I'm I'm not saying I don't like Fletcher, but I also think that you can't you can't just because you like Fletcher turn a blind eye that he's missed a lot, man. Well, no, you can, but I mean, some of the things you're pointing out, if for instance, if Fletcher doesn't sign Mike Yo, I mean, and it for one, we've all agreed the fact that that well, no, can't that, happen. That was the right decision. Okay, but, but now he has to fire Mike Yo. He can't okay, bring him hind, into the next season. Hindsight, twenty twenty. But so you reverse back to the fact that he signed him for three years. Yeah. Had he not signed him, you know for a fact teams would have lined up to sign him. Mm. Somebody would have. Mm. Somebody signs a coach that just brings a team to the second round of the playoffs. I think, Somebody does. I don't care who it is. I think teams would have wanted Laviolette more. I mean, Laviolette sat. Unsigned for what two years? I think Nashville goes Laviolette over Yo. 
I think when Yo gets fired now, I, I wonder if another team takes a run at him. I, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm not sure. Well, no, after this not, season, yeah, no. that changes everything. Sure. Yeah, yeah no, it's, 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 I don't think he's got uh, a lot of cachet in the league right now, to be yeah. honest with you. Final break, back to wrap it up. You know, folks who've listened to the show, they know that uh, I lived in the Uptown area here, right, uh, right down Pleasant Avenue, as a matter of fact. And on the corner of Pleasant Lake is where Uptown Pond is. And I have been here numerous times, had numerous uh, business dealings with them. It's just a nice place with good, honest people. Bob Jacobs and the owner, you run the place. You've always been good to me. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, we try. That's, our, that's part of our business. We're here to help people. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, so everybody walks in the door. We hope we can help. Well, what I, you know what I've always appreciated is uh, when people are nice to people who are the low man on the totem pole. Like when I was a bat boy, I liked the, the star guys who were nice to the bat boy. Right. And I mean, I came in here and you guys didn't know who I was. You didn't know I had a radio show and you right. treated me great. I mean, right. just a guy off the street. Listen, that's the idea with, uh, I think, a smaller family type business. Uh, somebody walks in the door. We don't want to let them see that see everybody gets treated the same way and we hope that's the case and yeah. we don't want to see them leave without uh, we try our very best to, it's, to, it's really easy it's, it's it's easy it's low pressure good honest people right in the corner of lake street and pleasant avenue you guys got to check out uptown pond all right wrapping it up wild wednesday on the jeffrey bay show tony d scott schweitz jason mcgovern the talk uh today has been mainly focused on Mike Yo and, uh, and and Chuck Fletcher and who should stay, who should go. Um, it's uh, kind of a, a split uh, split vote in this room. I I, I think um, that Scott and I are more in, in Fletcher's corner than uh, than Tony, from what I'm hearing. Uh, I don't know that anybody's in Yo's corner. Uh, does anybody here believe that Mike Yo will be the coach of this team next year if this team misses the playoffs? He, I mean, he can't be. I don't think it's no. a matter of if he is going to be. I mean, you have like you you said, you have to make fundamental changes, and if it starts. It has to start early, and you have to give the new coach coming in the ability to to evaluate and diagnose what the issues are and what needs to be fixed. And I mean, I think it starts from it starts from the the guy that that has a bigger heart, you know, on this team than anybody. And you know, I'm sure he probably doesn't want to throw anybody under the bus, but I mean. You start building your team around Parisi, and you kind of, you you go from there. Mm-hmm. I mean, not even a suitor. I mean, a suitor is he's not going anywhere. But I mean, Zach's the one that is is the epitome of of what you want to embody this team and the passion that he brings night in and night out. If you can get people to to be on board with that, like the kids and other thing. I mean, if they if they can try to emulate what he brings to the game and that kind of like just intensity and 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 passion. I mean, like go back to that Red Wings game and. I mean, you don't see a lot of players that are putting that kind of effort forward to bring that game back tied again so we can steal a point. I mean, you don't. I mean, he, he just brings that. You start building a team around that, you're going to see a culture change. And I think I keep saying it, but until you have a culture change in this team, nothing is going to change. I mean, just like just like the fact that you keep the same person on the power play and expect different results, it's insanity. I mean, you can't not do anything and expect changes. So... Tony, what do you what do you think? You know, I think I, I think a lot of um, a lot a lot of what I, the point I was trying to illustrate about Fletcher has to do with you know this being the group that he decided on, and and what we've seen over the course of the season is that the pieces don't fit. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of talented individually players here, and and I just I think that they're they're missing um, some complementary stuff to their games. You know, uh, I, I think down down the middle of the ice this year, they've they've gotten uh, some good defensive play out of out of Koivu. Um, he's a guy that does drive possession, but you need to identify a, a more um, a more benefiting role for him in the team and in his line mates and stuff like that. You know, I, the argument on Vanek, I think I think Vanek has created offense here. He's been up and down. Um, his skating's taken a step back, but I think you know there should have been more uh, emphasis placed on trying to identify somebody, you know, playing with him with Granlin a little sooner, playing him, you know, in a, in a more specialized role. And and a lot of this, um, a, a lot of this falls on maybe your coach, but beyond that, you know, if this is your team and you're the architect, you know, we need to um, have something happen here. So I think. We're down to like 14 games or less between now and the in the uh, trading deadline this year, um, which falls on March 2nd. Um, between now and then, we play Calgary Thursday. Um, 
you know, if this team loses a couple, two, three more games, I think that that it becomes time uh, to really see how much leverage and you know how much uh, how much uh, equity that uh, Fletcher's built here, and see if he's the guy that gets to uh, take another run at it with a different coach next year and, and blow up this roster a little bit. Well, if you decide you're going to make the move, how important is it? Do you think that you not don't put somebody in place this year, but get rid of Yo this year because you don't want somebody in there trying to save his job. You want somebody in there playing the right guys. I, w- I mean, I would say that it's definitely important to do. Um, the other thing I looked at for salaries that are falling off next year, the only one out of all three that even you can do anything with is, I mean, it's Harding, Ballard, and Brodzik are the three that are basically um, noteworthy that are falling off. I mean, you might have some two-way guys like a pro, whatever that, that are that are there, but Brodzik's the only one you can move before the deadline. The other two are, I mean, both injured and like season ending. I mean, you got, yeah. you know, Ballard with his face. It's unfortunate. I mean, I think he had some, he had some streaks of good play. I mean, Harding, you finally are, are able to eliminate that, uh, you know, Th- that issue that you've been dealing with now for for the past three years, um, and be able to clean that slate. Beyond that, I mean, I agree. Maybe you. I mean, I like I like what Matt Cook brought when he came to this team. Um, is he is he still the right guy to have on the team? Um, and will he be extended beyond? Probably not. So do you move him? Sure. Uh, beyond that, I mean, who else can you really move? I mean, that that's J- where you Jason Pominville. I mean, of of the big of the big veterans. Um, Jason Pominville's probably proven to be the the most consistently productive. He has. Do you think m- you have to gut this thing? I don't. No, I don't, I, I don't think I, you can. I don't think you can. I mean, Jason Pominville, same thing with. But it's you the have same, to. Would you no, even want to? It's the same thing with uh, with you know Granlin. I mean, Jason Pominville showed in the year prior that he has the, the tools. ability to he score has the thirty tools goals. To just, yeah. So why do you get but rid of somebody? They, they, let, they let this team at points last year. But he also disappeared in the playoffs. Both both series, he was he was absent. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna give you the, the benefit of the doubt and say, you know what? Before you completely blow this thing up and dismantle it, yeah. Aside from maybe some fringe players that you that you deal, and I will I'll stand by this, and you got to get rid of Miko. I mean, you you got to get rid of Miko, and and because it's the only way that you can like clear the air in the room and say the old the old regime is out, and now we can basically start fresh, okay? Sure. And, you know, you start that way, and before you blow it up and get rid of Palmer and get rid of the other people that, that honestly have – I mean, they got God-given talent that they can score goals. So why do you get rid of somebody like that but, before but you he, determine if you change the culture, change what you're doing, but the reason I then you do it. But the reason I mentioned Pominville is because you have to have two people willing to make a trade, man. You have to – I mean, look at it. You think anybody else doesn't see Koivu on the backslide with, with three more years on that contract Teams making some six? Team, some team would still take him. I, and, and you know what's interesting? Some team would you, take him. You know what's interesting? We're not on the other end of the phone like Fletcher is, so I don't know. I, I would say personally because I see it up close and personal – I'm not sure if another team doesn't evaluate Miko the way that some of us negative Miko people do. I think I think Miko does a lot of great things, but when when you stack up Miko as the franchise player because he is the franchise player, Shouldn't even be, even even if you and I agree Parise's, that, that Parise's Parise's the franchise. I agree player. with Let's no, call a spade a spade. no no no. I agree that Parise coming here and and the way that he conducts himself right. But this franchise made Miko the franchise player. They made him the captain. They've tiptoed around him. He has franchise player status within the organization, right? When 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 you um and, and I get destroyed by the advanced stats people and, and they're right. And 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 I'm I'm well good. Then hope, I, hopefully I'm, those on, people are out in the league and they'll somebody will want to take him. Hold on. And so so when you stack up Miko Koivu against other franchise players around the league, I mean it's brutal. And it, and it, is, it really is brutal on uh, with regard to driving the scoring, with regard mm-hmm. to playoff performance, with regard to um, huge moment goals when we need it. And it's a testament that he's not a franchise player. He might have the, he might have the C on his shirt, sure. but honestly, I mean, when you anybody that has half a brain for this sport would know the fact that you know he he is a good player. Yep. But it's the same thing. So you take him out of the role that he's in, and you plop him on another team where he doesn't have to be. The guy, and he can be maybe somebody that plays sure. whatever a defensive line center type bit. I mean, and I mean, he's still making the money because somebody's going to have to pay him. If it's us, part of it, them, part of it, whatever, he can maybe, maybe be, uh, you know, it's a better fit somewhere else. But the, you know, the other reason I mentioned Pominville because Miko has all the cards. He has all the leverage. He has a no move clause in his contract. So I don't care what he has. You have to find a way. No, but you but have I'm, to find a way because if he if he remains on this team, it's very, nothing will ever get better. It's very easy to say that, not taking into account that any trade that Fletcher agreed to, 
he'd have to go to Miko, say, hey, Miko, I traded you to Edmonton. Congratulations, sir. And you know what Miko would tell him? Go fly a kite. I'm not going. Trade's done. And then you committed to letting that guy know that you traded him, and then you got to deal with him. That's when you got a problem in the locker room with a guy that you've given the keys to this franchise and he's failed to get you to the promised land. I mean, that's that's the politics of hockey. That's the politics of, of professional sports that you don't want to commit to trading a guy that has a no-move clause that tells you to go fly a kite because then, I mean, the, the relationship is damaged. You owe this guy $6.75 million a year for the next three years, and his production... And his role is going to diminish. I mean, that that's just like the real. That's the reality of it. So that doesn't happen. You know what you fast forward to? You fast forward to Mike Richards. I mean, you basically say put him on the waivers. We, we can't do shit with this guy. Shit. We send him through, and somebody take him if you want him. If not, he's Iowa bound, baby. You don't like Minnesota? How do you like Des Moines? <laughs> I bet you love it down there. They love Finns and Des Moines. That and you know what? I mean, shit, he might be scared of corn. And 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 if if Fletcher has that equity, I mean, does Fletcher have that equity? Put Miko on on waivers. I think I mean, at some point, you know? at some point, Fletcher. I mean, Fletcher's going to get gristled enough where he's. Gonna, I mean, he's going to have the balls to say, "I don't care if you want to play hardball with me, Danny Heatley style." Then I'm going to basically say, "You know what? I'm going to bury you in the AHL, and that's where you're going to hang." And I don't care what, because either we're going to pay you with a buyout or we're going to pay you now. And at this point, it's worth it to my team, and worth it to the culture that we've built here to not have the negative elephant in the room that's getting paid the money to, you know, feel that he deserves to be on this power play or this or that or, or still be the leader of the team or what I mean, referred to as the franchise bear because he's not. Sure. He's not. So you know what? Hell, if he wants to play hardball, we'll see you at the Arrows, baby. I mean, sure. you, 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 Danny Heatley, Mike Richards, and the rest of the people that have that have big that's, contracts that nobody wants to take. Sure. So we'll, we'll plop your former all-star ass in Des Moines and – and that's, Godspeed. It, and right, and we, got, we got two minutes left. No, no, no more getting rid of this guy. No more firing that guy. No more what's the future of this guy. What's going to happen? It's going to happen. Got, we got two minutes left, guys. And Andy, so you got to make this quick. We are in a horse shit stretch of schedule. Now, now let's, just, let's just play devil's advocate for a Tony, second here. Tony wants to lose. I mean, let's, I mean that, well, but let's say you beat Calgary and Vancouver. Then you come home for Chicago, Colorado, Vancouver. You're at Winnipeg. You're at Florida. You're, at, you're home for Florida. Home for Carolina. What if, what if you go eight and two? What if you, what if you, go, what if you rip off a little eight and two in the next ten? It's not that hard. But what happens? If you do something before next Wednesday, that means we have a positive show. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that I might mean, be kind of Well, refreshing. I mean, seriously, that is a vulnerable schedule. Well, you that could, would, tra- win, that would change the those. deadline, the trade deadline, too, because then maybe you're trying to pick somebody I up. Mean, is it, is it, is it, when you look at these games, again, at Calgary, at Vancouver, home for Chicago, home for Colorado, home for Vancouver, at Winnipeg, home for Florida, home for Carolina, you could, you could. You could whip off an 8-2. and two. You, you, you rattle off three, four victories here over the next five games. And I'm I'm in there. Actually, we, there's only eight we, teams. Let's we, say let's say a seven and one. Let's say you go seven and one over that stretch. Then we, Six and two. Then we come in. And we come we in. We can build this thing together. <laughs> you know you know one of the hit things. The, hit the fucking bump. <laughs> hit the close. You, you know one of the things I note. wanted to mention today. It's Bell. Let uh, Bell. Let's talk. It, 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 and it's a lot about uh, uh, mental health uh, awareness and, and bringing uh, awareness Puppy. to. Uh, just just speaking out about um, you know people seeking out mental health help and not. Uh, Having the stigma there, I think that that's super important. Um, make sure that uh, if you listen to Wild Wednesdays, that that you that you spread the word about Bella's talk. Closing it with a P- PSA, I like it. Yeah, yeah. Next time, just warn me. I give you more time. Seriously, I was talking about firing Mike Yo. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, that's your a fault. service. That's a no. All right, well, that's going to do it for a Wild Wednesday. Thanks for listening. For Scott Schweitz, Tony Dean, Jason McGovern, I'm Jeff Dubay. This has been Wild Wednesday on the Jeff Dubay Show.